In the following tutorial, we are going to begin adding lights. We are going to add a dominant directional light, which is going to reflect our sun, where the position of the sun is and the direction of the sunlight. In the beginning of the tutorial series, we just simply inserted a point light. And so what we can do at this point is we can either right click and convert our point light into a directional light. And let me zoom out. Right click, go under convert lights directional lights and we can change this to a dominant directional light or if we simply delete this and if we go under content browser under actors and go under lights and we can choose directional lights open that up and we're going to choose dominant directional light this is going to be our sunlight so let's close this and then we can right click and add dominant directional light here so let's raise this up and we can see that it changed how it affects our scene. So right now we can see that it has a little arrow pointing down. That means this is the direction of the light pointing down into our scene. And we can see how the shadows and everything else is being affected. So it's pointing straight down. What we need to do is we need to position it so it reflects the sun from the sky shining into this direction as we are looking at it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our light and we can either press the space bar and position it by moving it and rotating it and we can see that it's affecting our scene already if we go inside we can see that it's affecting and casting proper shadows already another way to do so and a better way is by selecting the light let's go back to the move tool and if we click on the top toolbar of the viewport we have lock selected actors to camera so if we click on that and then click on our actor we will begin to look from the point of view where the sh arrow is shining down to. So now we can just simply position where the sun is and just simply drag in somewhere around here. Now what we are going for is the direction of the sun. So now that we position our light right about here, uh, let's unlock from the actor and unclick and lock select the actors. Now we can zoom out and we can see it and we can kind of take a look at where the sun is and if it's cast in the proper way and it looks like it is and next what we need to do is uh, so we can easily find it inside the scene let's increase the display properties and scale the actual actor so let's go into the properties by double clicking let's close this for a second and let's go on the display and let's increase the draw scale let's uh, put it up to five now all this does, it increases the scale of the actor so we can easily find it inside the scene. And let's go inside. This is the direction of the light that's casting and we can see the shadows. Uh, so this is what we want. Very interesting dynamic shadows being cast into the interior uh, and kind of uh, making these long shadows from the windows. So now what we want to do is we want to go in and begin to tweak the color. Now the color is going to be the same from the sky box. So by going to the properties, uh, let's go under light mass, open that up, as well as lighting components. The first value we want to change is the light color. So let's click on this and we can begin to choose the light that we want. Uh, what well, we're going after this orange yellow. So we can simply position right around here uh, in this color range. Uh, another way we can do so is use the color picker and go into the sun right over here and choose it from the texture of the sky. So let's set it right around here and let's uh, and increase and maybe make it a little bit more orange. So this is the color that we want. Click OK and let's go inside and let's take a look at it. And this is a little bit better. And if we just look outside, maybe make it a little bit more orange and less yellow something like this click OK next thing we want to do is is maybe increase the brightness a tiny bit but before we tweak any more settings we need to build our lights so let's go up to build lighting make sure it's on preview so it builds a little faster and click OK and make sure that use light mass is turned on and click OK and here we are click close and we can take a look at a more accurate representation of our light now the saturation of it is a little bit too much and if we go inside we can see how much it 
bounces around, uh, not too much, uh, but we can better see how the effects are seen. And what I mean by bouncing back into the environment, if I go off to the side here, we can see that our light is shining into the shadow area and light mass is bouncing the light back into our wall and reflecting this side of the wall. There is no light effect in this area, but light mass calculates and realistically lights those areas. So we need to tweak a few properties. And another important part to note is make sure that you have light mass imports volume inside the scene. And if you don't know how to create this, I covered this in an earlier tutorial and I will link it. So the few problems that we need to fix are the brightness of our light, the color of the light, as well as to deal with this dark shadow areas that is not being affected by our direct light. First thing is let's go into the properties and let's change the color. Let's uh, make it a little bit less orange and a little bit more something like this. Let's click OK. So this was what we had before and make it a little bit less intense. Click OK. Now under brightness we can increase the brightness. Let's put 1.5 and see what that looks like. It's already looking a lot better without even building the lights. And we need to take a look at and change the interior of the shadow color. Right now it's completely black and it's just very unrealistic. And the way we do that is by simply going up to View, World Properties, scroll down under Light Mass. Here we have few properties we can take a look at. Number of indirect light bounces. This controls how many bounces happen inside the environment. Now the default is 3 and it should be plenty. So keep this at default. And what we want to take a look at is environment color. Uh, the way the shadows work in real life is they are usually the opposite of the main primary light. So if the sun is orange, the shadow color is going to be more in the blue purple range. This is complementary color scheme where you have one light, primary light, shining one color and on the color wheel the opposite of that color is going to be the shadows. So let's click and choose something more of the blue, kind of a little bit purple. And we want to keep it fairly dark, we don't want it to be too light because this will saturate that scene with another color and we want to keep it fairly dark but we do want it to have some illumination. So we want to keep the contrast of light and dark but we want to keep it low enough to where it doesn't overtake the shadow and the entire scene. So let's uh, bump this down to maybe something like this. Dark enough, so let's click OK. And let's build our lights. Let's close this. And now we can see a little bit better for the interior. It began to light more of the interior in the shadow color. And to see it really noticed uh, on the outside, we can see that the shadow color have this purple reflection. So this is a lot more accurate to the real world. So let's quickly take these lights so instead of having them outside. Let's uh, drag them inside. Uh, let's turn our light back on just for a quick second. Let's put these so we have some illumination on the interior. Let's move this one over here. and Let's move it up. So what we want to do is we want to hold down the L key and left click. This places a point light and let's uh, move it up, move it closer to our light source. Somewhere around here, close enough. So it's important to have a light source when you place in interior lights. And let's decrease our radius. And by pressing the spacebar key, I can go through all the gizmos, uh, including the scale gizmo. And just kind of point it to where it affects our light, uh, the direction, the radius of it. And let's change the color to something more realistic. Uh, white uh, is a bad color to use when you light in your scene. So let's create more little uh, complementary color to what outside is. Outside is more warm and we want to keep the interior of this more towards the cool side. So we're going to have that contrast of color. So maybe a little bit more green. And let's click OK. Let's change our brightness to about 0.5. We don't want it to overtake the interior of the scene. We want to keep the contrast of shadow and light high enough. And let's take the same thing, hold down Alt and drag. We're going to duplicate it and move it to the other side. 
and we're going to do it one more time and move it towards to where we have right over here to the static mesh so it illuminates this area right here and we're going to decrease the brightness to about 0.2 and let's duplicate it on right over here so now we have some lights for the interior and let's build our lights and here we are if we press the G key this will reflect the game mode it will get rid of all the actors so we can see it a little bit better without having the actors in our scene and we can see uh, the lighting inside is a lot better uh, we have this cool versus warm contrast plane uh, we have uh, nice shadows going so the interior looks pretty good and the exterior reflects the sky and the sunlight and we have our shadow areas that are being very close to what the skylight is and it's nice and cool purple uh, versus the orange so the complementary color scheme that we have going in the scene as well as if we go back here we can really see this warm versus cool playing in the back in the shadows so I'll press the G key back again to get our actors back. Now the last part to do is jump inside the game and take a look at what it looks like from the point of view of the player. So let's right click, play from here, and let's just run around. We can see the shadow color being what we set in the world properties. Let's run over here to the back, it has a really nice cool feeling. We go inside we can take a look at what it looks like inside greenish tint going on here uh, run around we have some nice shadows we have uh, the outside light coming in and we have some illumination on the static mesh from the emissive texture that we have 